Hello everyone, Daz here. In our previous module editing basics video, we stepped through the process of how to create a module in Slider Revolution, right up to the point where our module was ready for editing in the module editor. In this video, we're going to look at the basic skills you need to start editing. Specifically, we'll go over the core of what you need to know to start editing text, links, images, and backgrounds. Starting out by modifying a pre-made module is easily the fastest way to get up and running, so let's grab a template by clicking New Module from Template. For the purposes of this basic tutorial, I'm going to select the Traveler Carousel template. Everything we're about to go through will work when editing any template, or for editing your own original content if you start with a new blank module, but I still recommend picking the same template as the one I'm using here, as it will make it a bit easier to follow along. Click the plus symbol and Install Template. Then from your Slider Revolution dashboard, just click the pen-shaped icon to open it into the module editor. We can close that global color skin pop-up. Also, if I hover over the slides menu, you can see this module has six slides. We're doing a basic tutorial here, so we'll only look at editing the first one of those slides and we'll ignore the others. The one we'll be editing is the number one slide, which you can see is highlighted blue. That tells us it's currently selected. Whatever you see on the canvas relates to the currently selected slide, which isn't much right now. We can see a background image, the Indonesia text, and the badge in the top right, and that's about all. But if I click preview, you can see there's more content there, like the man with the backpack, the book and adventure button, and some of the text. If I swipe between slides in the carousel, you'll notice that extra content stays on the screen even though we're changing slides. That's because it's contained in a special global layer, and whatever is in a global layer will always remain visible no matter what. If I close the preview down and go back to the slide drop-down menu, you can see global layers right at the top there. If I click on global layers, now on the canvas we can see all the content of our global layers, as well as the content of our first slide, or rather that of the slide we had selected prior to selecting global layers. If I wanted to, I could click on the second slide, then global layers again, and I'd see all the global layer content on top of the second slide's content. But like I said earlier, we're going to keep this simple by editing only the content we can see in the first slide, and of course the content currently in the global layer, since the content of both of those will always be seen together. So let's do some editing. Go back to slide one by clicking it to select it, and then click global layers again. We'll start by editing the big Indonesia text. First, select the layer the text is on. Normally, hovering over a layer will highlight the content in that layer with a blue border, like you can see happening on the image of the man with the backpack. When I hover over Indonesia though, no blue border displays. That's because we have the wrong slide selected. In the slides drop-down list, you can see we currently have global layers selected, but we know the Indonesia text is on a layer in slide number one. To edit a layer, we need to make sure we have the right slide selected first, so just left-click on slide number one to select it. Now, when we hover over Indonesia on the canvas, you can see the blue selection box. All I have to do is left-click on it to select it. You'll notice the text hyphen one track on the timeline has turned dark to show us which layer we have selected. In fact, I'm going to rename that now to make it very clear. Just double-click on the name in the layer to edit it, and let's call this destination text. The other way we can be sure we've got the right layer selected is you'll see a dashed or what's called a marching ants box drawn around the selection on the canvas. Whenever you see the marching ants box, you know you currently have that specific item on the canvas selected. Clicking elsewhere on the canvas will deselect it. Another way to select a layer is to click on the layer we want in the timeline. If I hover over destination text in the timeline, you can see the blue box appears around the Indonesia text. Hovering over layers on the timeline can make it a lot easier to find the specific layer you want, especially if you end up with a canvas covered in many overlapping items. Just click on the layer in the timeline to select it. You can also select multiple items if you want. Press and hold shift and you'll see your cursor change to a large cross. Now, with shift held down, click your left mouse button and drag a selection box around the items on the canvas you want to select. You can see I've group selected the Indonesia text and the content of the badge in the top right of the canvas. Holding shift while you make a selection does the exact same thing as selecting drag to select from the top toolbar. But for now, we just want to edit the destination text layer, so let's deselect everything by clicking elsewhere on the canvas, and then select our Indonesia text once again. Selecting any layer with text content opens the layer options tab in the sidebar and puts you in the content subsection. If you're in a different subsection than I am here, just click on content. Here you can modify what the text says in the text button layer content panel. Let's change ours to Mars. 
Changes you make here are automatically applied, but they aren't automatically saved. Just make sure you regularly click save on the module editor whenever you've made changes you definitely want to keep. If you want to change the font size, there are two ways to go about it. First, making sure the destination text layer is still selected, open the style subsection. Under the font and icon panel, you can see what looks like two letter T's right next to each other. Our Mars is currently set to 170 pixels. Let's change that to 300 pixels. And you don't have to type PX in there when you change the size. Of course, that's made the text way too big. So let's change it back, but this time using a different method. Again, make sure the layer is selected and you'll see a marching ants box with a handle on the bottom right corner. Just click on the handle and drag it to the size you want. As you drag, you'll see the pixel size in the font and icon panel update in real time. Be aware that whether the drag handle is visible or not really depends on which subsection you're in. For example, if I click on the animation subsection, you'll see the drag handle disappears. So if you don't see a drag handle on your selection, it just means you need to click on a subsection that allows drag resizing, such as the style or content subsections. With our text layer still selected, let's go to the style subsection. Below the text size field that we've already looked at are some extra options for styling your text. The field next to the two double A's that currently has 400 in it controls the weight of your font. Clicking the drop down menu will provide you with options to change your font weight. You can see here that we only have 400 regular as our option and no other options like bold, italic or other weights. That's because the options you get here depend on what styles are available for that font specifically. In our case, we're using the Anton font, which you can see is the selection in the font family field. Anton is a Google font that has just one style, 400 regular. If you want to change your font family, click the drop down menu and pick one from the list. If you know the font you want, you can type its name into the search field above the list of fonts. If I search for Work Sans and select it, you can see the text on the canvas immediately changes. Now if I go back to the font weight setting, you can see I have a bunch of options to choose from now, all because the Work Sans font has a lot of different styles available to it specifically. Next to the font weight field is another couple of double A's that look slightly spread apart. This field is for adjusting the spacing between letters. The default setting will space letters according to the font's default spacing, but if I type in 30, for example, each letter in my text will now be spaced apart by a further 30 pixels. The final field in the font and icon panel is the text color field. Click on it to open a color selection dialog box. You can select colors from the set palette there, or drag the circle icon around the color box to see your text color change in real time. To the right of the box is a slide tool for adjusting saturation, and to the right of that is a slide tool for adjusting opacity. If you know the exact hex code of your color, you can also type it into the main field area or the color field here. You don't need to type the hash as it will be automatically added. You can also type a name to save your color choice as a preset if you want. Click the blue button to commit your changes. Though it takes a little time to step through it all in a video like this, once you get a handle on this type of editing, you'll find it super quick to make changes to your text. For instance, your next vacation in Mars doesn't sound right. Let's fix that by quickly doing what we've already learned, but without me stepping through it. There you go, done. It's that quick and easy. Okay, that's the basics of text editing. Now let's look at editing links. First up, let's edit an existing link. Click the book and adventure button. In the layer options sidebar, click on actions. On the left side of the actions dialog box, you'll see a pink item with text in it that will describe the type of action that applies when someone clicks that link on your site. Click on it to select it, and a series of fields will appear on the right. In our case, you can see the action type is scroll below slider, but for this tutorial, we're only looking at basic links, so let's replace that with a simple link. Now you can see the action type in the pink bar has changed to simple link, and the fields to the right of it have changed to reflect our new action type. Click in the link URL field and type or paste in the URL of the link that you want to use. There are some extra options available to customize how the link behaves, with the one you'll most likely use above all others being the target field, where you can choose whether or not the link destination opens in the same window as your site or in a new window. Apart from that, the defaults are good as is, so just click the X button to close the window. Adding a new link is an almost identical process to editing one. Simply select the layer you want to apply the link to, click the Actions option, then click Simple Link. 
Again, just type in or paste the link in the link URL field. Every change made is automatically applied, so just click the X button to close the window. Again, remember changes you make aren't saved until you click the Save button. If you click Preview and hover over your link, in most common browsers you'll see your destination link appear in the bottom left of your browsing window. Ok, let's move on and learn how to edit and resize images. Let's replace an image. To do that, select the layer of the image you want to replace. In my case, I'm going to replace the traveller image of the backpacking man. Here we get two options. We can select an image from your own media library, or we can select an image from one of Slider Revolution's free images in the object library. Before doing any of that though, it's a good idea to know what size the image is that you intend to replace. For that, in the Layer Options tab, click on the Size and Pause option. Scroll down to the Position and Size panel, and you'll see in the W and H fields the size of your image. W is for Width, H is for Height, so our image is 300 pixels wide by 646 pixels in height. Now let's go back to the Content subsection. We'll choose the Object Library option first. As you can see, the Object Library gives you a great variety of images to choose from for all kinds of different purposes. If you hover over any one of those images, it'll turn blue, and a bunch of size options will be displayed from extra small to large, with O being the image's original size. If you hover over each size option circle, you'll see the actual dimensions of that size displayed in the bottom left of the image. We know the image we're replacing is 300 pixels wide by 646 pixels high. The closest to that is the small image option, so just click on the S and the image will be replaced with our chosen size. Click on the image to drag it to reposition it. We can also resize it by clicking on any one of the small white circular handles you see on each side of the image, and then drag them in or out. You'll notice when I do that, the aspect ratio of the image stays the same. If you want to change that, click on the Size and Position subsection. Here in the Position and Size panel, you'll see a white padlock. Click it once to unlock the layer, and now I can drag the width and height handles to resize the image's aspect ratio as I please. You can also type in the width and height of the image that you want manually. If you wanted to match the size of your original image, just type in its size. Our original image was 300 pixels wide by 646 pixels high. Obviously that size and this image for that matter don't suit what we're doing here, so let's find a better image to replace it with. This time we'll do it by returning to the content subsection, and instead of using an image from the object library, we'll grab one from our own media library. One of the great things about installing Slider Revolution templates is that they all come with their own images. Once installed, those images become available in your media library. The first image I can see there is a spaceman, so I'm going to choose that. I'm going to go back to the Size and Position tab to lock the aspect ratio again, then I'm going to drag the image to resize it and reposition it. That looks pretty good there. Let's move on and edit our background. Our background is in our first slide, so go back to that. Background settings can be found in the Slide Options tab, which is the second icon from the top right in the sidebar. You can either click it directly to open it up, or you can go down to the timeline and at the top of the timeline where you see the Slide BG animation layer, you can click on this folder icon. In the source panel there, you can see a field labeled Type. If you click the drop down list in the Type field, you'll see all the different types of backgrounds that you can use. As this is a basic tutorial though, we'll look at changing the background image and color only, and we'll leave video backgrounds for another tutorial. Right now our background is an image, but first let's choose colored. Click on the BG color field to open up a color selection dialog box. Use this the same way we used it earlier to change the color of our text, and just close it when you're done. Ok, let's change it back to image. Again, just like we saw a moment ago with changing an image, we have the option to choose an image from the media library or from the object library. If you choose an image from the object library, make sure you select the O for original size as that will be the largest size possible for a background. If you choose an image from your media library, also choose an image that's large enough to fill your background for the best result. And that's how to make basic edits to text, links, images and backgrounds. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next Slider Revolution tutorial video.